What's up dudes? Chooch back with another one today. Broke out the Sherman man after leaving this thing sitting for a little while I finally broke the Sherman back out and man I absolutely love this thing. This thing is chewed. Whew, it is fast bro after riding the V12 for a little while and then getting on this thing because this thing can go 54 miles an hour at top speed and that is just so fast man. It is a heavier wheel. It is a little bit bigger but man is this thing ride stable and is it fast it is a quick wheel but there's a lot of things i've learned in the time you know and being able to try so many different weights of electric unicycles and suspension wheels and large wheels like this and then smaller ones like the v12 and everything in between i can really tell y'all you know what what one's good for what one's not good for and i've seen a lot of these kind of like cult followings of uh, Sherman riders out there that kind of kind of get this whole vibe of like the Sherman's the best wheel and it's the only wheel you know really worth getting and that it's good for everything and you know it's good for a lot of things and it really is a nice wheel but I don't think that it's particularly good for exactly everything and every type of riding that people are doing nowadays so I don't know there's a few things i want to talk about and a few things y'all might find helpful whenever you're trying to buy your next wheel or either just curious about these things so let's get into it now this wheel right here is the old sherman this is the og sherman this is a wheel that is just phenomenal as is and now the upgraded version of this one is out and it's called the sherman max that one just has more battery power, 3,600 watt hours, and a more powerful motor motor than this one. So you get more range and more motor power. You get a 2,800 watt motor in the new ones as opposed to a 2,500 watt, which is the one I'm riding right now. And the one I'm riding right now will go 54 miles an hour at top of speed. So dude, the new one is just wicked. And it's um, they've done a lot of little improvements to it. Um, that really needed to be done this wheel was already phenomenal as is they they made this a no frills type wheel uh, this wheel doesn't have any of the um, you know the rgb led lights or anything like that it has a good headlight good tail light it's fast has a roll bar on it comes with a knobby tire and they ended up upgrading a few things on this one the new upgraded sherman max Whenever you go to the website, you'll see it. It's called the Sherman Max now. It's um, it's all of them come 3,600 watt hours. That's not really even like an upgrade you add to it. That's just standard, guys. 3,600 watt hours is standard, and you can go about a hundred miles of just you know casual like 25 to 30 miles an hour riding. You can go about 110 miles or so, but really sending it and really cranking it on the wheel being able to ride it as hard as you want to you can do that and go about 85 miles and that really is the key thing with this wheel is being able to go out get on the main roadways you know get on gravel paths everything like that and just go as hard as you want to and not worry at all about your range and that really is a big factor guys being able to just go all out the whole time you're riding because you may go on a ride that's like three and a half hours long if you're doing that you may want to be a little bit more reserved with your wheel if you're out like on an in-motion v11 or if you're out on like an s22 or something like that with this you're just going to be able to get out there and go full send the entire time and never let off i mean being able to go accelerate as fast as you want hit the brakes as fast as you want i'm talking for three to four hours of your ride and that is, I mean, you'll be able to really, really use the machine as hard as you want to with it being 3,600 watt hours. Now, you might be asking, well, why wouldn't anybody just buy this wheel and just be done with it? And just, you know, go for the Sherman Max and not ever buy any of the other electric unicycles. And it comes down to this, guys. It's whenever you're riding on a trail with this thing, there's just something in your mind that it just is telling you like you, it, it's so heavy and you just know in your head that if you crash this thing it's not going to be good 
and it's not that you're going to get hurt any worse crashing it. It's that this machine being as heavy as it is, even with the roll bars and everything on it, guys, it's a lot of weight, whether it be going down a hill, whether it be crashing on a side of a mountain, whether it be hitting a tree, whether it just be crashing on the roadway, guys. A wheel like this, even though it does have the roll bars, etc., etc., it's just not something um, you're going to want to bash like you see you see the guy you've seen the guys in the facebook groups and stuff like that even um even me man like whenever i'm riding like for instance i would be much more inclined to get on like an rs19 and a, a crash on that in the woods or like my m super pro or like an in motion v12 if i like hit a root or rock in the woods moving like 30 miles an hour i could just grab the wheel get right back up and keep going with this wheel, man, it would be pretty bad. Like, like literally, like, cr you just don't want to be crashing your veteran Sherman like that in the woods and stuff like that. And it's just hard to explain it because you might be saying, like, well, it has a roll bar. You know it'll be fine and everything. And it's just, it's not the case. Um, like, a smaller wheel like a V12 or an RS19 can sustain a lot more crashes. I know this is a weird thing to talk about, and not a lot of people know what I'm even talking about right now, but to put it this way is with a lot of the other lightweight wheels that aren't like 3,600 watt hours, you can really, really crash them a lot of times, and it's not going to affect them. With this, it's going to take one hard crash to dislodge some batteries, to really break something bad and mess a component up in it, and it's an expensive wheel. You can get another wheel for half this price that you can go out and just rip on trails and stuff like that and not have to pay this much for it and it, it's and most guys out there that have rode both and know about both know exactly what i'm talking about it's like dude you just don't want to be wrenching your sherman through trails and stuff that's why you don't see them at races guys because somebody pulled up at the line like next to me and they had a, a veteran sherman at an off-road race and i was sitting there on my exn i would just know in my head he's not going to send as hard as i am because it's just he's not going to want to tear his equipment up if he does crash it's not going to be good and it's just a lot of weight man to be sporting around with that veteran sherman so it's just one of those things to keep in mind and it's just unless you've ridden both of them you wouldn't know and like even me coming into this whole thing i'd be like dude that's the one i want to get why would you ever get anything else just go with the best one you know, it's expensive, but shit, if I pay the price for it now, why would I want to get any other wheel out there? And it's like, yeah, you know, it's just a lot of little things to learn from riding all these different unicycles. Put it this way, whenever, whenever I've seen someone crash their Sherman, they are absolutely devastated. Whenever I've seen someone crash their RS-19, they grab it, pick it up, and keep riding. Same with, like, same with most wheels out there, guys. Like, if it's, like, a King, just a King Song 18XL even. Like, those wheels that have the plastic shells have their place, guys. It's because, like, the plastic shells with a lighter weight wheel and all that, the, the, the plastic can sustain. The, it's just the way physics work, guys. Or physics works. It's like, this thing has a ton of inertia whenever it's going down. Like, you have, it's 90 pounds moving at 45 to 50 miles an hour and you know it's it's one of those things that when it does crash like everything in it is going to break whenever your like lighter weight wheel goes down like a v12 or something like you saw the 40 mile an hour cr crash i had on the v12 high torque that went down and nothing like literally the only thing that was broken on it was the lcd display if this went down at that same speed you'd have a bent roll bar you'd probably have a cracked lcd display the an internal part of the shell the entire internal part of the shell would be cracked because of just how much weight is slamming forward on it uh you'd probably have motor wires dislodged in it i mean literally guys it would it's hard to explain it but that that's kind of how it works with a heavier weight wheel it'd be the same thing i just like it's, I mean, it's like crashing a Rolls-Royce Phantom and a Honda Civic. It's like the Honda Civic, you know, the, the Phantom is just like a lot of inertia. It's a lot It's a lot more expensive, a lot more shit to break at one time. 
and you know it's just going to be expensive to repair the thing it's like the civic dude they got tons of parts for it they got plastic bumpers at every auto body shop for it like pretty much with the the plastic shell unicycles that's how they are you know yeah it's a plastic shell on the whole outer thing and not as intricate as this but it can be replaced for cheap so that's just the whole thing guys the new stock on this guys is going to be coming in in early july so that's you it's open per, for pre-order right now on the Sherman Max. This is pretty much the only one on the website sold out. And it's because every time these come into stock, they sell out quick, guys. And it's because you want to have one. Like, if there's one wheel I could have, it would be this one. And I know it's weird to say after all the crap I've talked about it pretty much. But if if I just had to grab one wheel, like if literally sh the house was burning down and I had to grab one wheel to head out with, it would be this one. Because it's the most expensive, it's the nicest one I own. Um, I, I've done the most little upgrades to it and whatnot. You know, I, I like it a lot for long range cruising. Like if I had to go just cover miles, put miles down, get on the main road and go cruise, this is the one I would take. But that's not the most type of riding I do. I like to do all types of riding. So that's why this just doesn't fit the bill for every type of riding I like to do. But it is a great wheel. And there's a reason it sells out instantly every time it comes into stock but you can place your pre-orders below if you want to pick this thing up or check out any other wheels link card above it goes to e-wheels check them out anyways it's been chooch i'll see you dudes in the next one